What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Skull Network. My name is Nick and I think you guys all just saw that game go down. Obviously not the way we wanted things to happen, but it was certainly an exciting game and there's a lot to unpack, so let's not waste any time. Let's get into the first recap of the season between the Vikings and the Bengals. Now this game was certainly a tale of two halves. Uh, as we know, there was a lot of conservative play calling on both sides in the first half, but the biggest thing that really kind of screwed over the Minnesota Vikings over the course of the first 30 minutes of the game was 14 total penalties. Now some of those were declined, we ended up with 10 in the first half, but regardless, that is absolutely unacceptable. And just when we thought this offensive line couldn't get any worse, we were sadly mistaken. There was only one offensive lineman in the game that did not have a penalty called on them, whether it be false start, holding, or illegal formation. And that was Blake Brandle, who lined up for one play on a goal line situation. Everybody else got something called on them. And I can say this with full confidence, as soon as Christian Derrissaw is healthy and ready to go, Rashad Hill should and most likely will be replaced, especially if he keeps playing the way that he did today. But if that didn't make the first half bad enough, Dalvin Cook really did seem to be underutilized over that first half. Uh, things obviously picked up a little bit in the second half for him, but he never really broke anything, and things just really didn't seem to be going his way, and that's partially on the play calling and obviously the situation of we're getting a lot of penalties and you're not trying to run on, you know, first and 20. But obviously the bigger stories going into this was the return of Joe Burrow and the return of Daniel Hunter. Joe Burrow, he seems like he really hasn't missed a step and he played very well, utilized Jamar Chase in his first career game extremely well. It looks like Jamar Chase is gonna be able to do stuff similar to what Justin Jefferson did. And Daniel Hunter, well, I mean, you paid the guy a lot of money and you didn't really hear his name until later in the game. Hopefully this is just a, you know, knocking the rust off sort of thing, but I was very much so not impressed with how Daniel performed until he got his sack, which did kind of change the uh, the way and the wave of the game. For all you Kirk Cousins haters out there, Kirk did throw for over 350 yards, two touchdowns and no interceptions. And as a Kirk apologizer or lover or fanboy, however you uh, casual fans want to call it, I can admit Kirk had some of his moments where he had his cement shoes on and he held the ball too long. And those are gonna happen with him. But there were a number of times where, you know, he ended up helping us come back. It seemed like we were doomed, you know, down two scores, and he and Adam Thielen really were the keys towards the end there, along with a little bit of Dalvin Cook and some Justin Jefferson as well, to bring us back and get us into overtime. It is pretty upsetting how the Minnesota Vikings offensive line performed, especially when Cincinnati was worse than us last year and tried to do the same thing, rebuild, they took a piece from ours, and they clearly performed a fair bit better. Yes, we had quite a few sacks today, but Joe Burrow just didn't really seem to be pressed in the pocket much. He seemed very comfortable out there. And like I said before, the first half was one story, second half was another, things really picked up. The defense for the Vikings really started breaking down. Joe Mixon had a great game, over 100 yards. It looks like Joe Mixon might be back, who knows, we always say this, but it looks like Brashad Breeland is gonna be like a Xavier Rhodes 2.0. Every time he gets burned or any time, you know, a running back comes and trucks him for a big gain, he's gonna go on the ground and he's gonna be hurt, which is obviously not what you wanna see from someone that you brought in over the course of the off season that you wanted to have help your team. But there shouldn't be a lot of overreacting to a lot of these things, except maybe the penalties, because it is the first game of the season, and you know a lot of these guys haven't played together, so all, there's all the hope in the world that things get better as this team you know, figures out really what they want to do, but obviously off first glance, it's not looking too hot. I think besides Adam Thielen and a couple people on defense that kind of showed out a little bit, uh, specifically for me, Nick Vigil, I thought he had a really good homecoming, you know, used to play for Cincinnati, but this is his real first opportunity since one season in Cincinnati to be a starter. And I think he played pretty well, but the real star of the show today was in fact kicker Greg Joseph. Oh my gosh, I understand that we lost, but let's face it, the most badass thing of week one throughout the entire NFL. And I'll put the video up here or a picture or whatever I can find. But after being iced, safety for the Bengals, Jesse Bates, coming over to Greg Joseph and trying to talk to him, give him a little sweet nothings in his ear and try to, you know, rattle him even more and, you know, mess with his head. Uh, I thought it was hilarious that Greg Joseph looked him off, Brian O'Neill came over and, you know, protected, protected his uh, his kicker. And then Greg Joseph proceeded to hit his second 53 yard field goal in a row. He didn't care. Greg Joseph is officially a badass. But unfortunately that amazing kick wasn't enough because even though the defense was able to hold their own until the very end of overtime, it was, uh, I hate saying this, but it was the refs. Now I hate blaming the games on the refs, but come on, you guys all saw it. Dalvin Cook's, both of his cheeks were flat on the ground, 
the ball was still in his hand. I understand it was one of those situations where you need like clear and concise evidence that, you know, he was down. It was right there, but the NFL and its rules are so out of whack nowadays that uh, I was having very little hope as it took longer and longer for them looking at the play to happen. So yes, I do genuinely believe that Dalvin Cook was down, should have been the Vikings ball, they could have gotten a couple more yards. Greg Joseph more than likely would have made the kick. It's obviously no guarantee, but I mean, it's safe to assume. This game should have gone to the Vikings, but not much you can do here, but obviously you expect Mike Zimmer to hammer down all the penalties over the course of the next week and oh, man, there's a lot of things to fix on defense as well. But that's our first taste of Vikings football. It was bittersweet. Man, it was a great game. Obviously not how you wanted it to end. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff I wasn't able to cover, but I wanted to keep this relatively short for you guys. If you want to talk about more parts of this game, just comment down below and I will be happy to talk with you guys. And that's going to wrap up this recap between the Minnesota Vikings and the Cincinnati Bengals. 27-24 in overtime, very last second field goal. You know, what can you do? But regardless, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit the button down below to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video and the content within it, make sure you give it a like as well. If you wanna share this video with anyone that you know, you can do that with anyone on any platform. And if it's a crack dealer on the corner, that's your guys' best option. You guys already know. My name's Nick, and I'll see you guys all in week two picks coming out on Wednesday. Adios.